My name is Joshua Norton, and I am the trumpet player for the Broadway show Les Miserables National Tour, and have been for the last three years. Welcome to ITG's Listen and Learn. I want to take a moment and talk to you guys about something that is very close to me, very dear to me, and that is coming back from an injury. How to approach the horn coming back from an injury, what I did, some of the exercises that I used, uh, some of the thoughts and processes as you go through that. And by injury, I'm not talking about if you twist an angle, I'm talking about an injury to uh, your face and coming back from an injury like that. Uh, so first I wanna to talk to you briefly about what I had uh, and the injury I had. So in my master's degree, when I was first starting, I was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma. What is squamous cell carcinoma? Well, it is a topographical skin cancer that develops through irritation. I don't know how I got it, but I had a tumor the size of roughly larger than a quarter on the left-hand side of my tongue. Not the best place for a trouble player to have it, obviously. So, I underwent a procedure called a partial glossectomy in which I had the left third of my tongue removed. Uh, I had some lymph nodes taken out to make sure the spreading wasn't an issue. And uh, after about three months, after that surgery, I had a second surgery just to clear up and make sure that uh, all the margins were good and everything uh, involved with the first surgery was going to uh, be a very positive diagnosis going forward. So I went through another procedure, this time called Brachy Radiation Therapy. And what that procedure entails is inserting six catheters through the floor of your mouth. Through that, going into your tongue, into the area where the tumor was, that they could then fill with radiation or radioactive metal beads and let that sit for about a week and then they remove everything so that it can radiate the area that the tumor was and more centrally isolate the area that the radiation is. Having both procedures done in the span of roughly, first one was done in February, the second one was in May. Both procedures caused me to take eight to nine months off the horn, was not able to play, and essentially once I was given the okay by my doctor to come back and start playing, I was starting over from square one. Now a couple things. One, as soon as I was given the okay, and even before then, I was working with a speech therapist to strengthen through exercises how to go about regaining the use of my tongue. What happens is losing that much of your tongue results in having to learn how to talk again, how to uh, speak again. How does this translate to the trumpet? I needed to learn how to re-articulate. How does that happen? Well, the tongue is the strongest and most dense muscle in the body. And you take one third of it and you have to fill a void. How are you going to do that? I had to learn with our articulation. When you articulate, you have a contact point. Whether it's where your teeth meet your gums or just behind that point where your tongue uh, come, has the contact when you articulate. That was no longer the case in trying to learn how to play. Second, you take away part of your tongue, you have an oral cavity, you play with an oral cavity. Now all of a sudden, sudden for me, that oral cavity got bigger because 
there's now added space where there wasn't space before. So in coming back, I had to discover two things. One, where am I going to articulate? How am I going to articulate? And two, what is my sound? Now for 12 years I had been playing and you grow accustomed to what your sound is from behind the bell. Now all of a sudden because there's a much more cavernous area in my oral cavity, because I don't have part of my tongue, my sound has changed. Another interesting side fact with this is as you go through and begin to come back is play by feel, play by what you hear. Obviously, if you have a larger, more cavernous oral cavity now, that's gonna affect what you hear, but if you play how you feel, and you're trying to reconnect what you feel with your playing, that's gonna change also. And taking eight, nine months off, everything fell foreign. Everything fell foreign. So first I wanna talk just a little bit that first day I got the phone call that I could pick up the trumpet again. Never a more better phone call that I could have received. Extremely happy. Wanted to rush into it right away. And I did so only under the first thing I did was go to my teacher at the time and we met and we discussed the plan of how to work myself back because this was starting square one. So the first thing I did was work with just a simple three note exercise, two half notes and a whole note. And you do that on any note, but we just started right on a concert of, it goes a little something like this. two half notes and a whole note. Quarter note equals 60, very simple. The very first half note, you can start by with just a breath attack. Take a nice breath and let the air flow through, let the lips react to the air, create the buzz, and that was just creating the buzz, creating the sound as I started my way back. One thing that that exercise allows for is as you breathe, one thing that I focused on, in the four beats leading up to the initial note, focusing slowly with that slow, with a slow tempo, on the fourth beat you subdivide it, four E and duh. And on duh, you think breathe in, four E and duh, and on duh, lips together, then the note comes out. So I was able to spend some time just doing that. And that one exercise, I would play one note, take a few minutes off. Play one note, rest. Play one note, rest. And coming back, talking with my doctors, because of the invasive nature of the procedures I had done, when you play the natural pressures that build up in your mouth, in your throat area, I did not want to, uh, even though they told me um, all the sutures and everything that I had were healed, I didn't want to overextend or overexert myself and create more damage. So I spent uh, we're working with them, I developed, they said spend about 15, 20 minutes for the first week, maybe the second week, and then you can start to build it up that way once your body becomes more comfortable with them. And that brings me to the second 
point I want to make. I had a teacher tell me once, uh, the body is the ultimate calibrating device. He said that to ingrain that if you hear it, the body's going to make it happen. You want to play that? You want to play it a certain way, hear it, the body will make it happen. Referring to the child. Well, how do you hear that and make it happen when you don't have anything? And especially with the cavernous way of the oral cavity now being bigger, and it's changed what my sound has become from what I knew it for the last 13 years prior to. You have to reorientate your ears to what you hear. What has your sound now become? Focus on that and then use that time to really hone in on what your sound is and then grow your sound out that way. And that's a, a crux of what, how I became uh, focused on working my way back. That was the building block of the road to getting back to playing. Second, I want to talk to you about another exercise that I did, and we call this the five note exercise. My teacher and I uh, came up with this to work on articulation. Now working with my speech therapist, it, she noticed in some of the exercises I was doing, what normally happens for a tongue if you wanted to stick your tongue out or, or as she would say, some of the exercises, stick your tongue out, stick it out to the left, stick it out to the right. Not having that muscle there anymore, what was straight and what was left was now left and extremely far left, respectively. Not having that muscle, the other muscle took, I, I took over big time. So now I had to retrain my tongue to articulate on a different point of the tongue. That, that goes to feel, playing by feel. I'm not used to where that contact point is, and you're developing a new contact point with the articulation. So with my teacher, we developed a five note study. Dotted half note, three quarter notes, followed by another dotted half note. Again, slow. And it really allowed me to focus on what I was saying. And to begin with, all we did was focus on using the word go. It went a little something like this. I went one step up, half step below, then back to the original mode. That's all I did. I did that particular exercise. Then I might do that same exercise, but a major third higher, and then a minor third lower, or a perfect fourth lower from the initial note that I started on. As you can see, I started on a concert in flat for that one. Maybe go up to an A, go down to a D flat um, for the next two concessive patterns. What that turned into was I do exercise one, then exercise two. Spent five, six minutes on exercise one, spent five, six minutes on exercise two, put some break in between. Playing an exercise that slow as I was coming back allowed me to really focus on how I was using my tongue spend the time to 
work at developing that new contact point with my articulation, all the while using my sound and also developing my sound as I went forward with that. Now, another aspect of uh, playing is slurring. That's the third exercise I wanted to talk about. Another one, how am I going to develop that side of my playing? And so I just basically started with uh, a concert F down to B flat, slur, we do that three half notes. as a breath attack, then again, take some time, come back, and play as an articulated right at the very front. That exercise helped keep and form the chops as I was coming back. Create fluidity and flexibility in the chops so not as to become so rigid as I went forward. The it was a very long road back. Um, if there's one thing I can say uh, as I wrap this up for you guys, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to stop by and listen. And I hope uh, you guys have learned something. And if you want to know more, please feel free to reach out, contact me. Very happy to discuss it talk about it. There's a lot, a lot of information uh, that I learned. I don't want to, it's a whole other uh, conversation to have uh, in regards to what I had, how I got it. Uh, but the one thing, if I could stress enough, is patience. Never before was I put in a situation, I always loved music, I loved playing trumpet, but to have that ripped away all of a sudden, and you can't play again, and you have to look at your horns in the corner of a room, and that's all you want to do, but you can't. Um, never thought I'd be in that position, or that situation. Um, I told my surgeon at the time, listen, I'm young enough, if if I can't play again, I'm okay with that. But if you can keep it to where I can, then obviously you know that's what I would like. And I had a great surgeon who gave me the opportunity uh, to at least try and pursue playing again. And the patience, 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 it's a big thing. Don't be in a rush, it's all about the journey what I learned, the fundamentals of playing and working my way back, and how those fundamental blocks put together helped me every step of the way um, were so very key. And so I just want to say thank you for letting me uh, come into your home, to your office, your living room, wherever you may be watching this video. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day. You're all staying safe, and thank you for letting me talk about rehabbing and, and everything coming back from a very serious injury to the area in which we make music as a trouble player.